Eating steak is a personality trait in our culture. The ability to get that medium rare determines your position in the hierarchy of food influencers. So let's learn from some of the best. My small ass apartment in New York City wouldn't allow me to smoke it over applewood low and slow. So what kind of pan are we going to use to sear it? A Teflon is the easiest to use, but it has toxic materials. So the only purpose is for Bayashi to make omuraisu. A non-stick pan is kind of easy to use, but it has uneven heat distribution and sometimes it does stick. A cast iron is the hardest to use, but it provides the best even heating. It's a form of midlife crisis if you can't afford a sports car. And finally, the stainless steel. It has great heat distribution and it's easy to use once you learn how to properly use it. So for our first method, let's follow along the king of cakes, Joshua Wiseman. Pull your stick out of the fridge and let it rest. Give it a little blanket. Pull my stick out of the fridge, let it rest, give it a little blanket. Pull out the Noma Fermentation Guide, read it a bedtime story. Pull out Princeton's Guide to Self-Loathing, give it a nightmare. And bring it up over medium high heat with about two tablespoons of oil in bring it up to medium heat and spray in about two tablespoons of oil season it very generously with kosher salt and fresh cracked black pepper season it very generously with salt and fresh cracked. the oil should be shimmering and moving around the pan really easily and it should be just about this smoke oil is shimmering moving around the pan i hope it doesn't smoke you should hear this sound and you should hear this sound Sear that bad boy at that hot, hot temperature for two to three minutes on both sides. We'll sear our bad boy for about two minutes on both sides. Until you get that nice, crisp brown crust. Hopefully we got that nice, crisp brown. Why is it so uneven? Should have same color as Ariana Grande now. Not Ariana Grande 10 year ago. Let it sear for about 30 seconds to a minute. Let it sear about a minute. Then add four tablespoons of unsalted butter. Add three tablespoons of unsalted butter. Two cloves of garlic lightly crushed. Two cloves of garlic lightly crushed. One bunch of fresh thyme. One bunch of fresh thyme. Baste and baste and baste with butter. Baste and baste and baste with butter. There is nothing that can go wrong with that. The thyme leaves are exploding and attacking me. You know, you can do the touch test if you know it. I don't know it, but I'm still gonna do it. And check out this graceful basting. One might say that I'm the master bait, I mean master baster. Now, as soon as that steak is done, immediately take it out of the pan, place it on a cutting board, and pour all that sweet butter and juices on the top. After touching it, it feels medium rare. We'll put it on a cutting board and pour all that juices on top. And then let it rest for five to eight minutes before cutting into it. Now, we'll just let it rest on this board for about six minutes and nine seconds. Let's take a second to talk about today's sponsor, Goldilocks, the only cookware brand that's brave enough to continue to be associated with this channel. As you can see here, this is triple layer, which means it has a really thick bottom and thick thighs. With just a little bit of oil, it can show your meat a scorching hot time. This is a professional grade pan that real chefs use. Goldilocks offers a whole set for only $1.75. If you're starting to learn how to cook, this would be great for building your culinary skills. Using a stainless steel pan is easier than you think. I will demonstrate later. If you're interested in some new affordable cookware, use the Goldilocks link in the description. Please use my link so they'll hate me a little less. This is what it looks like. I think the crust is a little better than I expected. At first, it looked really pale. Now we just have to slice it open. I'll show you guys what's perfect, medium rare. You know, sometimes it doesn't have to be all nice and pink on the inside to enjoy it with your mouth. But it is pretty tender though. You can easily pull it apart. So let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. Damn. The steak is very juicy. The outside crust doesn't have the best color, but the butter basting gave it a lot of complex, deep flavors. You can clearly taste the thyme and the garlic too. The only issue I see is that the flavor profile is too reliant on the basting process, especially the center is a little bland. I usually don't season or flavor my steak, I flavor my cutting board. How can you not click on a video when it's titled like this? We have to give this a try. Nothing but oil on the steak. Nothing but oil on the steak. Do you guys think my oil spray bottle is working properly? It's kind of like getting a weapon that's supposed to be area damaged and turn out to be single point. Salting meat immediately before cooking will enhance browning is, as far as I can tell, a myth. So we'll just put it directly into the pan when it's hot enough. For a stainless steel pan like this, this, you can do the mercury test. It's hot enough, when you put a couple drops of water, it moves around like mercury. The steam is evaporating so fast, it creates a barrier between the water and the metal. Also, it's kind of fun to look at. 
Just chopping up some rosemary from my yard. Just chopping up some rosemary from my neighbor's yard. Finally grating a small clove of garlic with my microplane. Finally grating garlic that looks like my micropane. I use lemon, sometimes I use lime, sometimes even grapefruit. I gotta save my grapefruit for the more important stuff, so I'm gonna use lime here. Un of coarsely ground pepper. A ton of pepper, pepper, pepper. Just a few grains of salt go on the board. I'll tell you why so few in a minute. And a few grain of salt, we'll learn why in a minute. I'll flip my steak. That's a strip steak, by the way. Brits would call it a sirloin. I'll also flip my steak. It's a ribeye, and the Brits will call it a ribeye. Couple little slivers of butter go on the board. One big sliver of butter go on the board. I like how the milky taste of fresh butter contrasts with the deep, dark flavor of the steak. I also like the milkiness and the dark deepness of the steak. I cooked this steak for nine minutes total and rested it for five. Steak goes on top of all that stuff. After nine minutes, we'll put the steak on top of all that stuff. Look how much splatter it got all over the place. It's on my phone, too. I'm glad I don't use a camera to film. So this is our unsalted pan-seared ribeye. The crust does look a lot better than the last time. This is my favorite part of the steak, the ribeye cap, because I love capping. I'll cut my steak into thin slices. I'll cut my steak into thin slices. I think this time we got much closer to medium rare. And because I'm lazy, I'll cut the slices in half so everything is bite-sized now. And because I'm lazy, I I'm just gonna leave it like that. We'll just toss the pieces in our pool of flavor augmented beef juice. We'll toss this meat in the augmented juice, like how we toss salad. Run it under hot water for a minute, both sides. A hot plate can actually reheat a well-rested piece of meat. We'll pour boiling water on the plate for about a minute. Really didn't think this through. Hey, fun fact, even perfectly pink steak will look gray or brown in natural sunlight. I love this fun fact. Cause it applies to all my food. Damn you, natural sunlight. I like for most of my salt to be in the form of a super coarse finishing salt. Since we have comfy garlic, I'm gonna put a little bit on top, sprinkle some salt, and give it a taste and rate it on through taint. I'm extremely impressed. It really does taste much juicier than a normal rested steak. Because we didn't cook the butter, pepper, and rosemary, all the flavors are much more vibrant. It's not necessarily better than the traditional method, it's just different. Overall, 9 out of 10. Highly recommend this method. What about the reverse sear? As its name suggests, it is the same process, but in reverse. Sometimes you just gotta do things in reverse, like a good cowgirl. And to prepare for Babish's method, we gotta salt brine it the night before. This way it not only season it throughout, but also dries out the surface for a better crust. But let's take a second to talk about what's going on with the color of my steak. So how come- Everything is blue! Is this normal? Let me know in the comments. I don't have health insurance right now, so I'm gonna cut it off. It's still kinda blue underneath. What is this? Let me give it a sniff. Woo! So we'll put these in the fridge and brine overnight. Alright, it's the next day. It's still blue, and it looks depressed. I'm inserting the temperature probe at its thickest point nearest to the bone, and sending it into the oven until it reaches 115 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't have anything to probe my meat like that, so I'm just gonna put it in the oven and stab it a lot with my normal thermometer. Daddy, I've got one stick of room temperature unsalted butter. Now a microwave, a cup of cold butter. I'm adding half a finely minced shallot. Some finely minced shallot. One clove of garlic that I'm lightly crushing, chopping, and finely mincing. Four cloves of garlic that I'm microplaning. I'm also gonna add a half teaspoon of chopped fresh thyme. We'll pick out some parsley leaves. And about a quarter cup of finely chopped fresh parsley. We'll chop some parsley leaves. There's a bunch of different herbs that you could mix and match here. Tarragon, dill, marjoram. Rosemary. I thought I would just the list of Babish's ex-girlfriend names. Optional chili flakes if you want a little bit of heat. Some chili oil we made yesterday. Mash that nonsense together with a fork and set aside until ready to serve. After we mix everything together, let's give it a phallic shape. So we'll lay down some plastic foil, put all the butter in it. Use the foil to shape into a tube. You can roll it like this. Ideally store in the fridge overnight, but drop into the ice water if you don't have time. Just like last time, we're trying to blast it with as much heat as possible so that we form a crust as quickly as possible. So again, we'll get the pan really hot, use our weird oil spray. We'll sear each side for about 30 seconds. Remove from the heat, back onto a wire rack, tent with foil, and let rest for 10 minutes before carving. So we'll put it back on the rack, let it rest for 10 minutes under a piece of foil. This is going to cut across more muscle fibers, making it more tender for the human mouth. I haven't been tender with any human mouth in a while, but I'm more concerned about the doneness of this steak. 
This is fucking rough. I think it's pretty nicely cooked, but how do you reduce the gray band on the outside? Ideally, immediately smear it over top so that it starts melting, creating a glistening burnished steak dotted with herbs and garlic. After putting them on a plate, we'll cut a few discs from the compound butter. It's still a little too soft and needs some more time in the fridge. We'll put them directly on top and torch it a little bit. All right, here it is. Reverse seared New York strip with compound butter. I think the doneness is fine. It's just the gray band is bothering me a lot. I don't think we had it in the previous two attempts. What did I do wrong? Let me know. After tasting it, I decided that this is the best one so far because of the brining process, it seasoned it throughout and the dry surface give a really nice sear. The aromatics and the milkiness in the compound butter is a great addition to the flavor profile as well. 9.2 out of 10, a pretty minimal effort method. For our last recipe, we're gonna make a country fried steak. Some people call it chicken fried steak because it uses the same cooking method as a buttermilk fried chicken. We dry brine this steak with salt and pepper. Now it's looking more depressed than ever. It's a little bit too thick, so we'll cut it in half. And then we'll make like a thousand of these little cross cuts to expose the surface area and also tenderize it. What traditionally is supposed to be done to a cube steak, which is the beef round, is a really tough and cheap cut. This method is supposed to make it fattier and tastier. But I'm gonna use a prime New York strip because I'm ignorant. So it looks like it almost can trigger people with trichophobia. We'll marinate them with two eggs, beat it with a ligma fork. You can beat it on the couch if you want. And about a cup and a half of buttermilk. We'll drop it in, massage the mixer into every little corner, the lactic acid in the buttermilk is gonna further tenderize it. Wrap it up into the fridge for 4 hours to overnight. For the dredge, 1 cup of flour, a third of a cup of cornstarch, half a teaspoon of baking powder, some onion powder, paprika, garlic powder. Now we'll dredge the steak. Oh, it got the white stuff all over me. Make sure you aggressively press the flour mixer into it so it sticks. Gotta get all that white powder up the crack. When it's about half an inch deep, we'll heat it up to 350 degrees. We probably spent 4 to 5 minutes on each side, so in total less than 10 minutes. While it rests on the wired rack, we're gonna make a pan gravy. First, dump out the oil, save just a little bit in the pan. Put in 3 tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Whisk it into the oil to make a roux. Once it turns blonde, we'll whisk in 2 cups of milk. I don't have milk because my dad never came back with it, so I have to resort back to water. But it doesn't give you the best result. And if you're worried about this sauce not having enough flavor, we'll just add some MSG. And since we have some, we'll mash in some comfy garlic, cayenne, and black pepper. To make up for not having milk, we'll use our never-ending raclette. Yes, it's still here, smellier than ever. I guess also some pecorino romano, because this stuff is basically MSG. Whisk it in, and that's it. Who's ready to get some cholesterol problems? This is pretty much the definition of America. Not enough though, we gotta smother it with gravy. After each bite, we'll have to drink gravy just to keep it down. Finally, a little bit of black pepper on top, and this is it. Chicken fry steak. Straight out of uh, one of the southern states. Despite all the wrong steps I've taken with this recipe, this is actually looking more legit than I expected. So let's give it a taste and rate it 113. Maybe it's because I haven't eaten in 20 hours, but just like my ex-girlfriend, this is confusing me and pleasuring me at the same time. Is it a fried chicken? Is it a steak? Who knows? It's the best of both worlds, and this is my happy dance. I apologize. It's so crispy, tender, and juicy, especially smothered in that cheesy gravy. The contrast really elevates the dish to another level. Easily a 9.5 out of 10. If I made it with real milk, it could be a 10. If you're just here for a fun time, not a long time, you should make this every day. Hopefully you found a good steak method for yourself from this episode. Now all you gotta do is just to practice it to perfection, and the testosterone will be overflowing. Oh, by the way, I probably won't post for a while, so take care. Alright, thank you. Bye.